Welcome back to my channel, IMDb 8 Recap. Today I will explain an action war movie named 300, released in the year 2006. The movie is about King Leonidas of Sparta and an army of 300 men who fight the Persians at Thermopylae in 480 BC. But before we begin, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and beware of the spoilers. The film opens with Spartans as they inspect an infant for any disabilities because their customs are ruthless. The Spartans inspect each infant born to ensure it is healthy and has all its limbs intact. If it is deformed, the baby is abandoned to die. We see many skeletons beneath the mountain they are standing on and the infant they are observing is completely healthy. They raise their boys in the school of hard knocks, the agog, in combat training as a small boy's loss of his weapon earns a bloody lip from the hand of his own father. At age seven, each young boy parts ways from his mother and makes his own way in the wilderness to return as a man later. Even the king endures this rite of passage. When he is seven years old, young king-to-be Leonidas starts his training so that he can be a warrior. The Spartans teach him that losing their lives in battle for their country is their greatest achievement. They would thrash him during as well as at the end of his training. When he turns 15, Leonidas is sent to a forest for one last test after which he can head back home to become a king. He faces an untamed and wild wolf. Leonidas lures the wolf into a narrow passage, after which he instantly and mercilessly kills the wolf. Later, he returns home to be crowned king. Thirty years later, a group of messengers visits King Leonidas. He asks the messengers about what the message is and how he can be of service. The messengers request Sparta's submission to King Xerxes, who has a massive army. Insulted by their request, King Leonidas refuses. The messenger takes out the skulls of all the other kings who denied their submission and were killed. He does this to scare Leonidas and later on also ends up insulting his wife. Leonidas is consumed with rage due to their behavior and he kicks and pushes all the messengers into a well, killing them all. Leonidas knows how big of an army Xerxes has and that they will attack Sparta. His opinion is that they should attack and kill them all before they kill all the Spartans. Acknowledging the threat of Xerxes' invasion, he visits the ephors, priests, to obtain their favor before marching with the Spartan army for the battle. The priests, who are well known as ephors, ask if he has gotten gifts for them. Leonidas throws a bag filled with gold and says that he wants to fight the Persians and intends to end the war before it can even start. He proposes to repel the numerically superior enemy by using the terrain of the hot gates of Thermopylae, funneling the Persians into a narrow pass between the rocks and the sea, where their immense numbers will count for nothing. They disapprove of this, as Leonidas keeps explaining that the Persians will easily kill them all and will turn the women and children into slaves if they do not attack right now. The ephors, wary of the plan, consult the oracle. The oracle is supposedly able to deliver the message of the gods. In her drugged trance, she decrees that Sparta must not go to war, lest they interrupt the sacred Carnelian festival. Leonidas departs in anger, and the priests receive their bribe of Xerxes' gold from the Spartan traitor, Theron, for their negative response. This means that the ephors are just greedy, and they will be with whoever gives them more gold. And in this case, it was Xerxes' men who gave the ephors more gold, and as a result, they misguided Leonidas in not attacking Persian the way he wanted. The ephors are promised more gold and a new oracle every single day once all the Spartans are killed and Xerxes becomes the new king. Leonidas is reluctant to defy the corrupt clergy outright, but his wife encourages him to think outside the box. She tells him to think like a free man rather than a king or a husband. Later on, Leonidas elects to take 300 of his best soldiers. They are presumably the best warriors Sparta has to offer, and these 300 men are ready to face thousands of Persians. Even though they know that it is a suicide mission, they are ready because they do not fear death. Theron comes there and suggests that they shouldn't go to war because the oracle disapproved of it. But Leonidas claims that these 300 men are his bodyguards and they are going on a leisurely walk to the strategic Hot Gates location. Theron is the same man who bought the ephors and he is on Xerxes' side, which is why he tries to stop them and wants Sparta to fall so that he can be in charge. As Leonidas and the 300 men depart, his wife says goodbye while telling him to come back with his shield or on it as she gives him a necklace while a hunchback man looks at them. On the road, they meet some allies who are shocked that the Spartans are sending such a small force. Leonidas asks about the professions of the man who has formed the allied army. 
and it seems most are craftsmen and artisans. He points out that he has brought more soldiers than them. They reach a village that has been burned to the ground by the Persians. A child comes running and tells Leonidas that horrifying demons with claws did all of this. A tree made of dead humans catches their attention as they all witness and claim that the gods have no, absolutely no mercy. Then, joined by Arcadians and other Greeks, they arrive at Thermopylae. In the sight of the approaching Persian army, they construct a wall to contain the Persians' advance. Strong storms destroy some of Xerxes' fleet, but it is only a small percentage of the massive army they will need to face. The horribly disfigured and hunchback man who was seen earlier looking at the 300 men, Ephialtes, who comes to see Leonidas and warns him of a disused goat path at the rear of his position. Ephialtes claims that his parents fled Sparta at his birth to save his life. He hopes to redeem them by fighting for Leonidas. Leonidas explains that each Spartan warrior is a key part of the phalanx and asks Ephialtes to show that he can lift his shield high enough to properly defend his fellow warriors. When it becomes evident that he cannot, Leonidas gently tells him to care for the fallen instead. Ephialtes' fondest hopes are crushed. A Persian emissary arrives and finds that the corpses of the previous scouting party now make up part of the large rock wall. The Persian states that their arrows will blot out the sun, and the Spartans agree they will simply fight in the shade. The emissary's party is killed. Prior to the battle, the Persians demand that the Spartans drop their arms and surrender. Leonidas refuses and challenges the Persians to come and take their weapons from them. With their tightly knit phalanx formation, the Spartans funnel the Persians into the narrow terrain, repeatedly rebuffing them and inflicting heavy casualties. Xerxes, impressed with the Spartan fighting skill, personally approaches Leonidas to persuade him to surrender. He promises Leonidas wealth and power in exchange for his loyalty. Leonidas declines, promising instead to make the god-king bleed and turns to rejoin his army. Dismayed at the refusal, Xerxes sends his masked personal guard, the Immortals, a name that the Spartans also proved to be false. The battle continues, with the Spartans prevailing over soldiers and animals drawn from the vast reaches of the Persian Empire, from Mongolian barbarians and eastern chemists to African rhinoceroses and Indian war elephants. However, some of the brave Spartan warriors are also killed, and it becomes clear that more will follow. Ephialtes goes to Xerxes and agrees to show the goat path to the Persians in exchange for a uniform, along with promises of women and wealth. Xerxes will grant Ephialtes his wish if he will kneel before the god-king. Back in Sparta, Queen Gorgo has been trying to convince the council to send help to Leonidas. A friendly councilman arranges for her to speak, but explains that she will need Theron on her side. Theron agrees to help her if she will sleep with him, so she does. At the hot gates, the Spartans learn that they have been betrayed and know their fight is doomed. The Arcadians retreat in the face of certain death. The Spartans refuse to follow. Leonidas orders a reluctant Dilios to return to Sparta and tell of their inevitable deaths. In Sparta, Queen Gorgo makes her appeal to the council. Instead of supporting her as promised, Theron betrays her, accusing her of adultery. Enraged, Gorgo snatches a sword and stabs Theron, rupturing a bag of gold hidden in his robe. As the coins stamped with Persian markings spill onto the ground, the council realizes Theron's treachery and agrees to unite against Persia. At the hot gates, the Persians surround the Spartans, who have created a dome out of their shields. Leonidas stands in front of the dome. Xerxes' general demands their surrender, declaring that Leonidas may keep his title as king of Sparta and become warlord of all Greece, answerable only to Xerxes. Ephialtes urges this as well, to which Leonidas remarks, May you live forever! An insult from a culture valuing death and valor in battle. Leonidas drops his shield and removes his helmet, seemingly bowing in submission. Stelios then bursts out of the dome and leaps over his king and kills the general. A furious Xerxes orders his troops to attack. As Persian archers shoot the remaining Spartans, Leonidas rises and hurls his spear at Xerxes, ripping open his cheek, thus making the god-king bleed. Xerxes, visibly shaken by this reminder of his own mortality, watches as the remaining Spartans perish beneath the combined might of his army. Leonidas himself marks his final moments by telling his wife aloud that he loves her. A rain of arrows falls upon him and the screen goes black. Back in Sparta, Dilios gives the necklace to Queen Gorgo and tells her of her husband's fate. 
Concluding his tale before an audience of attentive Spartans, Dilios declares that the 120,000-strong Persian army that narrowly defeated 300 Spartans now faces 10,000 Spartans commanding 30,000 Greeks. Praising Leonidas' sacrifice, Dilios leads the assembled Greek army into a fierce charge against the Persian army, igniting the Battle of Plataea. Here, this movie ends. To watch many more exciting recaps like this, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Let us know in the comment section about your favorite movie that you would like us to recap next. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe and healthy.